This review looks at a model of a big heavy crawler crane and the label on the box tells us it's in the colours of Franz Bracht of Germany. The crane is the Terex Superlift 3800 and it's got a maximum lifting capacity of 650 tonnes. So it's a big crane and it's a big model and you almost feel like you need a crane to lift up the box. There are three trays of parts so there's plenty of work to do to assemble the model. To help with that is a 24 page instruction manual and that shows all of the parts listed out. And the pictures take you through the stages of assembly, showing you where the parts get used. The instructions are on the whole very good with just a couple of bits of information missing, including the reeving of the main hook. The first thing to say is that if you don't want to build up the model you can use the parts as transport loads. Although the rear access platform on the cab is not removable so it sticks out too much. A big crawler track makes a good load. And the big boom sections also look good. Even the hook block is a significant component. Let's get on with assembling the model and the first thing we can do is to screw down the pads which the real crane uses to unload itself off of a truck. They are mounted on small outrigger beams and they just fold out. And to then keep them in place you attach small plastic beams. These work well and they're quick and easy to fit. Once that's all done the crane is then stable on its pads. Connections on the model are made with plastic bolts and these have to be removed from their mouldings. And the first things to join up are the big heavy crawler tracks onto the crane base. They hook over onto the lower frame and then they're secured in position by two hefty plastic bolts. This makes for a strong and stable connection, but you might have to work quite hard to locate the bolts fully. The first of the reeving jobs to do is on the A-frame, and of the two reeving options only the simple one is really legible. To make life easy the A-frame is temporarily supported by string, and we'll use a gob of plastic putty to stop the rear pulleys flapping about. The rope for the A-frame is one continuous piece that ties onto the drum at both ends. So to start the reeving off we'll mount the spool temporarily, and then we carefully follow the reeving diagram going back and forth, back and forth. It helps to be patient when you do this and have an even temper, otherwise when it gets frustrating you might throw the whole model out of the window. Once the rope is fully threaded on the system it's best to then pull it through. So you get two equal lengths of thread which you tie onto each half of the winch drum. Now unless you like to suffer real pain it's best to use an electric screwdriver to speed things up. And then use it again when you want to raise or lower the A-frame. Onward now to complete the undercarriage and there's a ballast tray to add at each side. And that gets topped off with a couple of the ballast weights. On top of that there's a walking platform which slides into place. And to allow the operator to get up onto it, there's a small set of stairs to attach. Two more ballast trays get added on at the back of the crane and they just hang in place. And we can add a few ballast weights on while we're at it. For this initial assembly we'll just put the main boom on. And the sections join together very easily because the fit is very good. And they are then secured together with the plastic bolts that Conrad uses. This model has slightly nicer flat headed bolts and they're easily pushed into position. One nice piece of additional detailing on this model is the mesh walkways. And these all get separately attached with special clips that are provided. Different types of clip are provided and this first one attaches the mesh walkway to the lattice frame. And another type of clip just attaches to the walkway and that provides an attachment point for the safety line system. That system consists of posts which clip on, and then you run a steel cable between the posts, 
which a man on the walkway can clip himself onto. With the boom assembled, we now attach it onto the crane body. And this is a heavy duty connection, which it needs to be because of the loads involved. Once again, the parts fit together well. And to secure the system, you use more big, heavy plastic bolts, which again might take a little effort to ease into place. Next, we lower the spring loaded backstops and these stop the boom being pulled back too far. And here we've attached all of the plastic pendant bars which bolt together with more plastic bolts. Now we get to the exciting part which is where you can raise your boom. And again if you feel your life is ebbing away it's best to use an electric screwdriver. And it also comes in handy because we need to add the thread to the main winch drums. And here we've rigged up a temporary arrangement to support the spool as we fill up the winch drum. After adding the hook block we can add on some detailing. And that includes metal walkways which attach to both sides. To complete them there's some plastic steps which clip on at the front. And then we'll complete the counterweight with 10 blocks on either side. The last bit of detailing to add is some metal handrails. And these clip on around the winch drums on the boom. The track frame has got some nice hydraulic pipe detailing on the inside. And this version of the model has narrow track pads which are much more accurate to those found on the real crane. Comparing it to the real crane you can see the thinner track pads. And the track frames are suitably heavy too. The cab interior is reasonable and there are mesh walkways and handrails outside. And one detail missing on the model is the windscreen wiper. A nice aspect of the model is the Franz Bracht graphics which are very sharp. And at the rear the counterweight blocks are nicely decorated and they're a good representation of the real ones. The boom sections are of a very heavy metal construction and they are scaled accurately to telescope for transport. They don't have any internal cross bracing but they are dead straight. The mesh walkways are good as is the safety line system with its realistic steel cable. And it's a good enough representation of the system used on the real crane. One area of modelling compromise however is the pendant bars. They are plastic and certainly tough and robust. And the colour match is a bit variable and different to the painted metal. The solid plastic pendant bars are also not as detailed as the segmented ones on the real crane. One thing that is very nice on the model though is the metal pulleys which are used throughout and are free rolling. We'll now look at some of the features of the model. And to begin with, the crawler tracks roll smoothly enough. The tension is maintained by spring loaded idlers. And there are working plastic rollers both on the bottom and the top of the frames. This is a big heavy model, but rotation of the crane is smooth and without any rocking. And a nice feature of the hook block is that it's fully modular and can be broken down into two different sizes. Because of the way the hook block is designed, it's best to use lines from two winch drums. But that means you have to turn them equally to raise and lower the hook. The crane cap folds out from the transport position and it also tilts. But on the review model, the tilt mechanism wasn't quite stiff enough, so it struggled to hold a pose. The best feature of the model is its flexibility, so you can configure a very long main boom like this. Or you can go for the full configuration of a luffing jib with a derrick and suspended ballast. The suspended ballast system is nice because there are working winches to tie it to the crane body. But be careful not to put too much ballast on if there's no load on the hook. 
because that can pull the derrick down and screw up the A-frame reeving. Another very good feature is the way the suspended ballast can be lowered to the ground. The real crane controls it by hydraulic cylinders. And on the model you rotate the jacket to extend the piston. We've now set the crane up ready for load testing on the short boom. But before we do that let's carry out some dim checks to see how high it is. With the short boom it's 33 inches or 84 centimetres. But you can have a bigger arrangement with the full luffing jib assembly. And that can reach a height of around 62 inches or 158 centimetres. Time for a genuine imitation real life test and we'll carry out some load testing. We've set the radius at 40 centimetres which scales up at 20 metres. And if we look at the load charts for the configuration with a 42 metre boom. And at a 20 metre radius we get a maximum safe load of 129 tonnes. For the purpose of the test we'll assume the frame is 9 tonnes and each counterweight block is 10 tonnes. With those assumptions the model should be able to safely lift 12 counterweight blocks and it does. With a 50% overload of 18 counterweight blocks it's still not tipping. So let's try just two more blocks. And there it is tipping and thankfully it's not collapsed in a mangled heap. This is another very impressive and large heavy crawler crane model. As you can expect from Conrad it's certainly tough and robust. And it's certainly very flexible with a good level of detailing. It's a very attractive looking crane in the colours of Franz Bracht and overall it's outstanding. <laughs>